Beirut's Tabani at the 2024 Mr. Olympia event. Look at him here in the first call out. Do you think that would have happened? Well, us as fans are left to speculate. Seems like year after year, Beirut's Tabani qualifies for the Olympia and then he doesn't make it. And this year, he really had a chance to get in there considering he defeated along the way such greats as Nathan Diasha, William Bonac, and even Creezo, Michael Creezo. So is this realistic? Well, let's face it, guys. It's going to be very difficult for anybody to get into this top three, top four situation. Even Martin Fitzwater, as great as he was, yeah, they compared him in here, but I don't think they were going to toss him in there. And speaking of Martin Fitzwater, we will definitely be having a, a closer look at Martin Fitzwater and the rest of the we'll say top eight at the Olympia. But just for fantasy reasons, let us have a little comparison. Let's see how Beirut's Tabani would have did in the first call out against the top three. And you know what? It's the front double bicep pose. If you know Beirut's repertoire of poses, you know this is one of his best ones. And you know what? He stands, or he holds his own. He stands. He stands a good chance of, you know, beating a couple of these guys anyway, doesn't he? His conditioning is great for sure. Here's the front lat spread. And I noticed one thing, and I noticed uh, the same thing when he did battle against Samson Douda at the uh, Romania. His wheels are a little undersized. Probably would be the case against Derek Lunsford had he shooting as well, but gosh darn it. He sure does look good, and he compares very well with the top three. In the front shots, that is. Now you turn... <laughs> what happened to Beirut? He done shrunk down. Just a joke, guys. Kind of an inside joke. This is actually... A, probably, I think I might even made him too tall here. I think he'd be shorter than Derek Lunsford. He's he's a good, substantial Buckingham Palace. He's probably like 5'10", something of that nature. But he sits down. Look at him. <laughs> Still a force to be reckoned with. So if you're joking around saying, oh, he definitely would have won the Olympia. Well, he wouldn't have won it. But you know what? He probably would have won some shots. Side tricep maybe would have been... The shot for Beirut's Tabani to win here at the Olympia in the first call. It, I'm sure you go through the roster at the Olympia. There'd be a couple of bodybuilders here and there that would have beat all three of the top three guys. Uh, Samson, Hattie, and Derek Lunsford in at least a couple of shots. And Beirut's, geez Louise, he looks pretty good here in the side try. I say try instead of tricep to save time. The back shots little bit revealing of the weak point of your Beirut's Tabani. And hey, hey, he definitely should not take that personal. His back, nicely drawn out for sure. Condition on his own. He looks, he looks like the Olympia champion. But you put him next to these Boeing. And I mean Boeing 747 Jumbo Jets in all three cases. Samson and Hattie and Derek. Their backs just on another level altogether, size-wise. Those three are buses. Go to the rear double. Kudos, though, to Beirut's Tabani for holding his own on conditioning. The guy is peeled in this rear double. It's a better shot. I still don't see him. Oh, it's not a very good timing there for Hattie. I'll tell you that right now for free. Free of charge. But he is, you know, is Hattie getting third out of the top three in the rear double? <laughs> I think so. It's Derek's best shot. Samson was on. And friggin', pardon my language, but Beirut's looks good too. Looks very good. And then the abs and thigh, he's definitely not going to lose this one. So for sure, he's maybe even winning a shot. Maybe even two. 
I don't know about the other one. I don't know what the other one would be. <laughs> you win in the front double? Maybe. I don't know. But the abs, yeah. I mean, he's giving Hattie Shupin a run for his money, but still not beating him. And the most muscular proves that Beirut's to Banny, if they had have tossed him in there like they did with your Martin Fitzwater. It would have made sense, I think. I think he was that gosh darn good. I guess the question remains, could he have beaten Martin? Beaten Martin. That sounds funny. Could he have defeated Martin Fitzwater along with the the remaining top eight? Well, in the front double he does. But we've seen from the, the poses against the top three, that was one of Beirut's best shots. I don't think there's any way, shape, or form that he's losing to the, the dudes beside him. Look at the waistline, the arms themselves. Maybe the best set of guns out there. Now, William Bonac, we've been down that route before, and uh, I, don't, I don't see any way, shape, or form that Bonac is defeating him in this shot. There's definitely some Bonac shots between the two. Now, the condition-wise of Rafael Brandao, if he was on, he'd definitely give him a run for his money, but arm for arm... I mean, their physiques are very similar, and when you're when you're winning on the arms, I would say Beirut's for sure. Now, the only question would be Andrew Jack, and I mean, come on, ladies and gentlemen. Everybody in between Andrew Jack is going to be a very difficult man to defeat in this front double bicep pose, but you know what? Beirut's to Benny. He looks pretty gosh darn good. Waistline. Awesome, awesome pose. But we'll, we'll say... Second, and that's most certainly going to help him when I make my ultimate decision on where I think he would have placed. Here's the front lat spread, another very strong pose. And yeah, Andrew Jacked, he was not 100% at the Olympia, but still that in the front double, I don't see anybody beating him in that. And that probably anybody at the uh, entire roster of the Olympia. But having said that, William Bonac ain't beating him. We know that. Martin's not beating him either. Lower half, he is a stud Clydesdale. But still, upper body, there's just no way. And Hunter Labrada, also, he is a true stud. He is a true stud. But still, upper body, condition-wise, also, Beirut, he's, you know, he's knocking one out of the park. The only question here is, like I said, he's losing to Jack, of course. The only question would be, the stud here. The studly more. Who's winning in this shot? I'd like to know. Aesthetically, I mean, Rafael Brandao, he looks incredible. Lat for lat. Very close. Wheels. Jeez Louise. Brandao's got some incredible uh, quads. He has an incredible set of quads. That is. But wow, what a close one here. Telling you right now, we'll say, uh, I don't want to just do it to be nice to Beirut. We'll, we'll do the opposite. We'll, we'll give him third. Which is good, guys. Second and then third. Turn to the side. And you know what? I kind of wish that Beirut would stand up. He's got the big wheels. And he he just can't help but sit down on them. To create that gray big thickness in the hamstring. And it is impressive. I think it beats Bonac. I remember going through their shots. And, you know, for the most part, I did have him beating Bonac. Even when Bonac beat him, I still had him beating Bonac. But anyway, I have Beirut. I think he'd get an edge over Andrew Jacked. Not the best pose for Jacked. But as far as the other three Clydesdales, one of the best shots in the the whole of the Olympia with Rafael, Hunter Labrada, and look at the big quads on Martin Martin. Ferdin Martin. Wow. Beirut, he just looks out of place when he's, he's crouching down. But man, oh man, there is arguments. Says he's going to win this one even. Win? Uh, I don't know about that. I'd, I'd almost go with Hunter. This is a a dilly of a pickle. A tough one. For sure. 
I'll have to revisit that. Side tricep. This is a strong one. I would suggest he's defeating several guys here. Martin, not a strong pose for him. William Bonac, eh, I would take Beirut over Bonac. As well as Andrew Jack, not the strongest position for Jack from the side. But I mean, the other two uh, studs, I was going to say Clydesdales again, but I guess I already used that. Hunter Labrada and Rafael Brandao. Wow. Some of the best you're going to see in the IFBB. So I guess another solid third place here for Beirut to Banny. He's doing pretty well, guys. Heading into these back shots. Now, is, is he going to be in a mess like he was against the top three? Look at the width. I mean, look at even Martin Fitzwater right beside him. I mean, you got Hunter Labrada. These guys are giants. Actually, let's take a closer look. Beside Martin Fitzwater and even William Bonac. Is William Bonac? He's he's got some unbelievable condition as well. And when it comes to Bonac versus Beirus, I gotta say, at least in the rear lat spread, Bonac was probably getting him. Look at the lower half. I just do not see Beirus Tabani competing. Lower half separation, things of that nature. What about the other two Clydesdales in Andrew Jacked and Hunter Labrada? Yeah, he's probably beating Andrew on condition, but I mean, come on, people. Andrew's back. It's a bus. It's a bus. It's wide. No, I guess the only question is Hafal Brandau. And his back, back for back, I gotta say, it is maybe even better. Maybe even better. Close. Very close. Needs a little more width and thickness, for sure. Beirut to be a, considered an Olympian prospect. But condition-wise, yeah, we'll give it to him. So I guess he's second, second to last in the rear lap. But the rear double, he looks a lot better. Oh, man, look how thick that Hunter Labrada is. He is a bad, very, very nasty guy to stand next to. Once he gets his conditioning in, I'm telling you right now, guys. Not going to be a dude to look past. I think he's doing a little bit better. I think he traditionally he beats Bonac in this shot, doesn't he? Well, that's, that could be a debate also. But having said that, he's definitely not winning this rear double. But I do not think also that he is losing it. Keep in mind, guys, his conditioning... Condition-wise, he's beating Andrew, and he's beating Rafael Brendau. So, you put that into your little calculator. And, of course, the abs and thigh. He is going to be a standout in this lineup. Look around him. Look around him. Hunter Labrada, nowhere near as good. Martin Fitzwater, nope. And when it comes to William Bonac, good old Bill Bonac, even on his best day, he's not going to beat Beirut's Tabani. Even the... The beautiful flow of that Brazilian bombshell, Rafael Brandau. He doesn't beat Beirut to Benny in the uh, abs and thigh. The only guy beating him is Andrew Jacked. And that is actually worth a little close-up, Al. I mean, come on. But still, still, good set of abs for Beirut to Benny. Very dry condition as well. Bravo. So there is a couple of second places there, guys. And when you look at the most muscular, Beirut's Tabani has to be considered a favorite. So he's probably winning this shot, guys. He looks pretty darn good in this call-out of six gentlemen. Be your top eight, be your top nine. If Beirut's was in there, somebody would have to place ninth. And you know what? I don't think it would be Beirut's Tabani. In fact, I think he would get a victory over Rafael Brandau. Hey, he wasn't on. You know that. He was not 100%. And I think he would have beat Bill Bonac. And that's no surprise. That should not come to a surprise. Now, when it comes to Hunter Labrada, people are going to get upset if I say he could have beat Hunter Labrada. But you know what? Going pose for pose... 
I really think he could have defeated Hunter Labrada. Hunter is that much bigger in the wheel department. A little bit more complete, I would say. Maybe. You get the bigger calves, things of that nature. Would have been close. Would have been close. He wouldn't have beat Martin. He wouldn't have beat Andrew Jack. But he could have beat Hunter Labrada. So he could have got sixth. Beirut to Benny. He could have placed sixth. Could have been seventh. I don't know, man. Hunter's got some pretty big quads to be dealing with there. So, yeah. Sixth or seventh. One of the two. Can't, can't make, make up my mind. He just looks good in the most muscular. Hard to, hard to bet against him. Don't bet against me because you'll all go broke. Macho man. Little Macho Man impression there to end this one off. Thank you very much for the requests. Time and time again, I you know never cease to may never ceases to amaze me on the incredible requests you guys come up with. And this one did take a little while, but I'm sure you forgive me because I put a little bit of extra time and effort into it to make it a decent product for you fellers and fellasies. Have a nice one. <laughs>